Welcome to the Logic Bank Zone 1 Territory Guide in my new Kingdom Maker series. You've just been made R4 territory of your new jump project and your jump leader has informed you in Discord planning that you will be going to 3501 and you will be building the flags in Zone 5. The first thing you need to do is locate zone 5 of the map type you're going to. We're on 3499 at the moment. 3500 will then be the next map. And then a new uh, set of kingdoms will begin or a new region will begin. You know that you're going to be the first kingdom in the new region. Which like this is 3497 is. Like 3493 is. And if you notice, all of these have the same map type. Bottom left here is zone 5, which is where you'll be going. Now, you need to know, not all zones are the same. Some zones are significantly easier to build out. Zone 5 is pretty awful, and that's why I've picked it. Let's say, though, you were going to... Uh, you were building the flags here. On zone 2, which is, I would say, the easiest in the game to build the flags on. Just put your centre fortress in the middle and it's a small zone. Everything's closer to but closer together. But here we are. You can't pick it sometimes. You don't know what zone you're going to go to and you don't know what you're going to be in charge of. So let's try and work this out on a bad zone. So before you jump, you need to scout the territory. Let's have a look at this zone 3. You simply make an account in a, a kingdom that has had the fog removed. Let's go to markers. And here we are. It's a very big zone with two sets of sanctums and one set of altars. The first thing you need to identify is where are you going to put your centre fortress in this huge zone. It's a real problem. What you need to do though is have a list of priorities. The first priority you should be interested in is that you want to get the training, building and research altars. They are the core development altars and are really important to the development of your alliance. So I would begin by plotting those. The next thing you need to then look at is of course the first four sanctums you're going to take. Uh, what you need to remember though is there are two sets of sanctums. So I believe we go to this sanctum here. It is the 10% commander buff. And then if we come back out and just slightly move over here, this is a duplicate sanctum. And what you don't want to do is connect four sanctums, uh, but you do not have the four buffs. Instead you have duplicates. The next thing you want to of course look at is from where you place your centre fortress you want to be able to really gain as quickly as possible ideally in the first 10 flags 6,000 in wood plus 6,000 in food plus then at least one stone and one gold mine. Now the three green squares here are the research training and building uh, altars. So they are your core development altars and they're very, very far apart. There's a big wide distance in between. Then I have now marked four sanctums, which are uh, individual sanctums and no duplicates. Uh, so uh, it may be then a good idea that we obviously want to be in between the two furthest altars and in the middle of the four sanctums or the best we can be. So let's look at the next slide. So this area here would be around where I'd want to put my um, center fortress. Obviously then I want to gain food and wood as quickly as possible. The best way to do that would be to place the central fortress on top of a food and a wood. If we look closer into the Square, there are two spots where we'll be able to place the central fortress and immediately gain plus 2k wood and plus 2k uh, food. Then both spots also have a stone reasonably close. 
The top right hand one here may be a little better. There's a food to the left and a and a, a, and a wood almost getting you straight to plus four, plus four. Um, where this one down the bottom, on the bottom left here, has two stone in immediate. Uh, and it's a little further away from where perhaps where we would want to be. What I am recognising though here, we are going to have a gold problem. So, once I've established my plus six, plus six wood and food... I would be looking to add a gold as soon as possible, but I think that's right here, far left, before we get to our first um, gold. It's really important to also talk to the Diplomacy R4 that they are not going to be making alliances within this zone. If you're planning to build out all the altars and a full set of holy sites in this zone, it's important in my opinion to not start making alliances. there's a huge map for you to make alliances with plus all those that you've come with you on your jump party i would avoid making um alliances within my starting zone if i can help it or if i'm able to influence that building the center fortress is obviously really important uh, again, you would need to. You have a conflict with the other R4s in that they're looking to gain power as quickly as possible. Where, of course, you want to have at least 10 spots in the alliance that are fluid, which have a high turnover, where they are being removed once they've done their 10k in help coins, and other people can then join or other farms are brought in to give their 10k. I know it's frustrating that you want that. Uh, alliance coin and other people in the alliance are going to want to just build power so that they get that top spot and attract more people to the alliance but you need to have that fluid five or ten places which is constantly leaving the alliance being cleared out uh, i would usually use my leave my alliance open so anybody can join into those five spots just so that i'm always gaining alliance coin because it's incredibly important to get your center fortress up as soon as possible. Once your center fortress is built, you want to then spider out, like this example here. So you go in southwest, southeast, northwest, and northeast. So you're spidering out from your center fortress to cover as much uh, ground as possible. Do not build all the way to one sanctum. And then all the way to the next sanctum. Then all the way to the sanctum after that. You want to try and build towards the resource points in turn. So perhaps two flags towards the first sanctum. Get the wood. Then if there's no resources in the next flag. Place a slow build flag. Then up two flags towards the next target. Get the stone. Get the gold. Then stop if there's going to be no more resources. Then two flags or three flags out towards the next target to get more wood or food. And you're spidering out in turn. Do not just build one in turn. If you get to a sanctum and there's one flag between you and the sanctum and it's not going to get you any resources, don't place it until you absolutely have to. When the, You want to really place that a couple of hours before the sanctum needs to be taken. You do not want to place it days before when that flag could be used to get more resources. Now, I would sometimes go for a fifth sanctum if, I, if things are going really well. But I would want that sanctum to either be on the way to another target. So on the way to an altar. So if we look in this map here or the zone 3 that I showed you. Um... So this altar here, for example, is on the way or could be on the way to other targets. It's on the way to other um, past twos and it's on the way to another sanctum. So connecting that could be an option, but obviously it shouldn't be your priority to duplicate old uh, sanctums. Let's for a moment talk about research. Obviously, you want to do architecture. The other R4s are going to want to do Greater Alliance. What you need to do, though, is prioritise architecture. Uh, 
I would perhaps do the let them do the first Greater Alliance 1-1, one, 1-5 one, one, I mean, then you do archite Architecture, then flip back to Greater Alliance, then before Greater Alliance is finished, when Architecture is finished, flip back to that. Uh, the sooner you get Architecture to 5-5, five, five, it is a huge bonus to you. Also, don't forget you're going to need to put the first level of flags to get those extra 10 flags pretty quickly as well. So I would ask to be in charge of placing the research and try and strike a balance between adding places to the Alliance. Ultimately, the most places to the Alliance that are going to be added are through your flag building, not through the Alliance tech. The next point I want to talk about is the continuing increase in the cost of flags. So flags have an inflationary cost. This means your income must keep up with the inflationary cost of flags. So just the same as in real life, if inflation's at 5% and you get a pay rise of 3%, you're falling behind in your cost of living, or in this terms, the cost of flags. So always try and be adding food, wood, stone, and gold uh, that they are, yes, you've got to build out to the holy sites, but it's a priority that you must always be increasing your income to keep up with the cost of flax. Also, you need to understand the balance between wood and stone. Sorry, wood and food. They should always be balanced. If, for example, one player has, uh, one alliance has 10 food, 10 wood, 7 stone and 4 gold, They've got 31 active resources, resource mines paying in. If your alliance has 15 food, 5 wood, so in balanced, 7 stone and 4 gold, you really only have 26 active alliances and you have to alliance resource points. And you're going to have to try and make up the difference through gathering on your land. Um, what I would say is if you begin to have an imbalance between your food and wood, you immediately, don't wait till one of them is low, immediately start chasing your alliance to gather more of that particular resource on your land. Once you've captured your sanctums, don't immediately start building out to the uh, altars. What I would always like to do is a, a moment of consolidation where you look around the sanctum for one build resource flags for example there's a food just by this one uh to say before you start building out your altars to consolidate look around all of your sanctums and get those free resources if there's one flag build from extra resources it's always a good return also if you have built out to five sanctums uh, you may want to disconnect the duplicate before you move on to your next building stage unless that sanctum is taking you on the way to more altars you may want to disconnect it uh, but only to the point where it has if it has no resources on the flag now it's time to build out to your altars the main tips you need to know is obviously as i've already mentioned you would do your development altars first for example the building speed one here the research and the training. Then pri prioritize your combat altars, which is the, the plus defense and attack. And then only finally, if you uh, can really, if you're able to build out to it, the resource production altar, which is the least valuable. Uh, I would aim to try and build out at least four or five altars because uh, remember, this is important. It's important for your alliance recruitment that you have altars connected. Uh, there are some players that are not going to join you. If you haven't got the core development um, altars, it, it say you're going to have struggle to recruit professional players. Also keep in mind that if you have four or five altars connected, this is again good for uh, migration recruitment that uh, you will be able to offer sleepers a huge reward when they join you. Again though, 
like with sanctums, don't just build out to one altar, then build out to the next altar. Try and build out to different spy. Try and spider out off the sanctums to different altars. As you're getting near to completing your altar build, you need to start working on your research of your technology of storehouse expansion. You need to get this to the level where you will be able to then drop a second center fortress. So once the altars are taken, or if you're doing really, really well, before the altars are taken, you want to place your second center fortress on top of the first center fortress. The first one is your alliance coin one, which only costs 1 million, well, with your full tech 900k coin, where the second one costs resources to build. The reason you want to place this uh, center fortress on top of your original center fortress, it then frees up your alliance coin fortress to be moved. This can be very, very important for your R5, whether he needs to, uh, whether they need to attack another alliance or um, will be then important as you move into the next zones, which will be not in this guide, in future guides, but it gives you the flexibility to move into the next zone and save before you move, because you'll be able to use Alliance Coins to put up that first center fortress, where, uh, as opposed in zone two, as opposed to having to save up resources and use those, you can then use saved resources for flags. Once you've captured your altars and placed your second centre fortress, remember to then again consolidate by going around all of your altars, looking for freebie resources that you can just connect on with one flag. It's always worth doing this, as I say, these early, um, early resources are far more valuable than the resources you will get later as they have more time to pay in. Now, past ones are a bit of a problem really because uh, for building, they're not very valuable. They're not uh, absolutely needed, but you will be under pressure to uh, connect some past ones. But what I would say is I wouldn't do more than two and try and obviously spider off a sanctum or altar that is close to the past one of course if it's got resources on the way to it that's brilliant but if you see this past one here once it was connected and captured they then disconnected it because there was no immediate resources yes build out to the past ones it's not brilliant for your building or territory plan but it helps recruitment people would expect you to have a couple of past ones what i would say though is if you have not placed your center fortress your second central fortress, and you have not got your development and combat altars, that they should be the priority before connecting level one passes. If this results in you getting no level one passes, and I say the R4 recruitment's upset, well, I would always argue that if someone's going to leave us to go and get a pass reward, let them go, and I wouldn't be inclined to have them back in the alliance. Moving on to pass twos, uh, I would again aim to get three or four of the past twos, uh, especially the past twos that, uh, depending whether I'm having to connect four shrines or two shrines, certainly the past two that is closest to a shrine is very valuable and should be your priority build. Um, this can also be the point when it's important that you have not made random alliances with small alliances that you say you will often have to take down other people's flags to get to the past two, but you're the main alliance, don't feel bad about doing this, um, and I would always look to connect three or four past twos. This, though, is when you're going to see the problem with this zone. Zone five here only um, connects into one zone two, which is... Uh, it's going to be a problem, which I will talk about in the next guide. Some zones, though, have uh, a, a superior in that they connect into two zone twos, which makes building out to the passes a lot easier. If you are being asked to build out to four shrines, you're the top alliance, then you may need a satellite alliance 
on one of these past twos so that you can feed people through to build the centre fortress that you place in the other zone too. But that's for another video. Uh, I hope you found some use in this video. Uh, helps you think about what you're doing um, to try and keep the flags balanced. Uh, and remember, important, if you've built out on your way to your sanctums and you've built out on your way to your altars and you have got to the point where you're not going to get another resource, pop down a slow build flag and start looking at spidering out another way. That's really important. I hope this, uh, this guide helps somebody. Let me know if you want me to make a part two. Really, this is just a test to see if anyone is interested. Thanks for watching.